Whether you are new to coding or have been coding for years on end, one thing that stays the same is having different skills to help you stay productive. Does this sound familiar to you? You are coding, but you feel like you aren't getting anywhere, that you're just staring at the screen and hour after hour, nothing is really changing. This is something a ton of developers experience. I know I have been one of them, but there are certain skills or tips that you can acquire to make you be a more productive developer. Before we get into it though, make sure to hit that subscribe button for more tech and coding related content. Shout out to some of these subscribers here. Thank you for your questions, feedback. I always make videos based on what you want to see, what you ask for. So if you haven't done so already, make sure to leave in the comments other video topics you want me to cover. Also, as you've seen earlier, I posted my Instagram on here. Make sure to go give that a follow, come say hi. Let me know if you came from YouTube. Okay, let's get started. This is a story that really isn't so uncommon when developers are staring at screens at their code for hours on end, or maybe it just feels like that, but you're not really getting anywhere. You're not being productive. And it seems as though you just can't kind of, what is that saying? Put your foot on the gas to get moving. It's not that uncommon, but when you hear about some of these skills or tips that you can acquire very easily to make you a more productive developer, this will really shift instantaneously. Now, I'm not trying to say there's a secret formula here to always being productive because productivity is a myth in itself a lot of times. However, these skills and tips are really to help you when you are feeling as though you just don't want to write code today or move forward, but unfortunately you have to, uh, that can help you kind of move forward at a quicker pace. The first tip I have for you is to not be afraid of errors. Yes, I know it sounds kind of contrary to what we all think when we first see an error come on screen is, oh, what is that? Or we can ignore it. But more often than not, if we just take a step back and actually read what the error says, I know it sounds very obvious, but I mean, how many of us are guilty for not doing that? It can really save us a lot of time uh, by just taking the time to step back, read what the error is. Sometimes it's not that helpful, I understand that, but other times it will give you the answer as to solving your problem right in the error. Learning to properly debug an application can save you so much time in the long run. And although really learning to debug is a skill in itself, uh, that does take time to develop. Once you have developed it, it will save you hours, hours, weeks, probably years on end by being able to debug properly. This is something that I honestly, I think I held off on for way too long. I thought, okay, I'll just log out everything. I won't learn, learn to use different debuggers properly depending on what language I was using. And honestly, it really for a long time caused me headaches that I didn't even need to have, but because of my own stubbornness by not just diving in there and debugging uh, or learning to properly debug, it really slowed down my coding growth and in the end, my productivity. So if you are someone who is either learning to code or has been coding for some time and you haven't picked up the skill of debugging, put that on your list to do first. Debugging, number one. Number two on my list is have a plan. Learn that before you dive into coding, before you are building a feature or building a product, if you're building a small tutorial product or your own product or project, uh, have a plan, go in with a plan. Too often we get excited, especially if you are a beginner learning to code, that we just start typing on screen. And I'm guilty of this still too. Rather than coming up with a full plan, I just start diving into it thinking, oh, this isn't going to be that big or it won't take much time. Hours later, you're halfway through in spaghetti code and getting nowhere because you didn't take the time to plan properly. One of my favorite things about coding is there are so many different ways to develop new features. However, that can also be one of my least favorite things because there are so many ways to develop features. A lot of times we don't even really think about the best solution. We just dive in and do what we are comfortable with or what we have done in the past and rather we should take some time, step back, plan out properly what we are hoping to achieve. Really, honestly, even today I had that moment where I was asking for help and if I would have just taken a few minutes to, instead of that to just speak out loud to myself or to a rubber ducky and say what I am trying to achieve and come up with a plan, it would have saved a lot of back and forth and a lot of time. And so rather than just jumping into writing your code and starting a new project, come up with a plan, a high level plan, and then really break it down. 
Now, don't go the other way where all you do is end up spending all your time planning that you never actually code. You need to find that happy medium, but make sure to just not jump in uh, without at least having a high level plan of the different components you're going to make, how you're going to structure your code, how you are going to make it reusable if it needs to be reusable, and it will save you so much time in the long run. The third tip I want to talk about is find the right environment for you. There are so many different places where we can code and we can code from pretty much anywhere where we want, which is amazing. However, one of the downfalls to that though is sometimes we put ourselves in environments that might not be suitable for us to be productive. For myself, I know if I go to a coffee shop, it sounds like a great scenario for me, being able to walk in, have a coffee, sit down, be surrounded by other people. However, I'm never really that productive there. And maybe for some of you, that's where you're most productive, but it's really important to know what environments you really thrive in and can be productive in, and what environments are distracting to you and really are counterproductive. This is really done by trial and error. If you never have tried out going to a coffee shop or uh, working from home or any of the scenarios, you're not going to know what's best uh, for you. One thing for me I know though is I love coding by having my two monitors, my dual monitors. That's really uh, productive for me because I can see everything. I can see my code on the screen versus just on my laptop screen. I'm not someone who is productive coding on the couch or in my bed. Um, so just be aware of the environment you are coding in because the environment you put yourself in to work in will have a huge impact on your productivity. The fourth tip I have for you, and this is something that once again, I had to learn the hard way, is to have a set of tools to help you. And what I mean by that is when I, I'll give you an example. When I first started coding uh, at the first company I ever worked at, I was really resistant to using different tools such as Postman or um, what, what, what are some other ones? You know, even Chrome Dev tools or really any tools that would essentially help me um, by being a better developer and help me develop faster. I was so resistant to use different kind of tools. And I think the reason for that was because I was just still new to coding and getting my foot in the door that the thought of introducing more tools on top of what I already was learning just seemed too overwhelming. The problem with that though is it really slowed down my development and I think it will for any of you as well who are learning to code if you are not willing to adapt and bring on different tools that will help you with your productivity. Now you might be asking how do you know what tools can help you with your productivity and development and I can't really say specific tools because it depends on what you are working on. What I would recommend though is if you are working on say an Angular application or a React application or maybe you're working on a back-end application or the back-end of an application, Google, just use Google, Google is your best friend, some tools that can help you with that specific language or specific framework. Uh, whether it be different kind of uh, plugins that you can download, whether it be different tools such as Postman, different tools that will really help your development process speed up. Now also too, I really wanna highlight, don't go the opposite way by downloading every single tool in the book. So just try once again and find that happy medium balance. Uh, but just kind of take note if you are starting to resist using tools. It might be just because you're feeling how I was feeling, just overwhelmed with everything. And, uh, but just recognize that it will save you a lot of time. And the last tip, the final tip I wanna share with you today, tip number five, is to take breaks. I get so many messages from people saying, how long should I code for every single day to be efficient? Or how long do you code for every day? It's not about how long you code for, it's about what you do in the time that you code. So it's always a very interesting question to answer for me. And I think more than anything is realizing that coding for six or eight hours straight is not beneficial, to most people anyways. You need to take breaks and step away from your computer to give your mind a rest and kind of, what is the word, refresh it, just like an application, you really do. And you can't just be a robot sitting there coding 24 seven. So be kind to yourself, take breaks. Even if you are stuck on a problem, I know it's very easy to just wanna stay at the computer and not leave until you figure it out. Or for me anyways, I'm really guilty of that. But it's so important to take breaks, step back, go for a walk. At in the end of the day, it will make you more productive. I know it doesn't sound like that, but I can tell you firsthand, it always makes me feel more productive and be more productive when I come back. And a lot of times it helps me solve the problem. So take breaks. I know you all are very hard workers, but 
you gotta take a break. Okay, those are my top five tips for different skills or um, habits that you can develop to be a more productive developer. It is so key to take these in order to really grow your coding skills and become a better developer. I hope you found this video very valuable and helpful. I'll leave in the comments other video topics you want me to cover. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Okay, I'll see you all soon. Thanks everyone.